Earlier today, I received a Twitter DM by none other than Jacob Alpharad. He wanted me to react to this video. What a perfect Pokemon. Wait, what? Wait, what? That's big. If you make that mistake, that haunts you forever. And of course I said yes. Generic control the Dr. Goosby here, back with another video, and this is actually going to be a random extra video I'm uploading throughout the week. I actually got a DM by none other than Jacob Alfred over on Twitter. He also followed me on Twitter. Thank you so much for that, Jacob. But he had a request. He requested that I react to this video so he could see my reaction to Pokemon Kaizo Edition, which it looks like it's Emerald, so I don't know if it's Pokemon Emerald Kaizo. I have no idea. It's by Yan, who I've heard so much about. It's Pokemon Challenges is the name of the channel, otherwise known as Jan. Uh, I've never seen any of his videos before, so this is my first ever interaction with this, and it's a very, very long video, one of the longest videos I've ever done, but when Alfred asks you to do a video, you do that video ASAP Rocky, but I'm excited to jump into this. I've been reacting to Alfred's content for well over a year now. I think this is the 60th Alfred video that I have recorded, at least 60 videos. It's been a lot. One comes out every single week. Uh, you want to check out last week's video, which was uh, Mario Party, the hardest Mario Party challenges, which kind of related title. Leave it right up there. Also going to be linked down below in the description. Also, shout out to the patrons. Thank you for the videos there. Live and not paywall on the channel. I completely against paywalls. So I'm here to make you smile, not make you pay. That's why I read every single comment and respond to every single one of them as well. And hopefully I can make your day 10 a little better for having a rough day. It's going to be a long video. Also going to be starting my Pokemon White 2 Nuzlocke today over on Twitch at 5 p.m. So I just finished my Pokemon White Nuzlocke last Wednesday. Starting Pokemon White 2 today. But let's go ahead and jump into how I beat the hardest Pokemon game ever made. Okay. What is the hardest Pokemon game ever made? I don't know. Over the past six years, I've dedicated myself to answering this question. I've spent thousands this of This is my first time watching Yon's videos. Games, but out of all the ones I tried, none have come close to Pokemon <laughs> no. Emerald Kaizo. Oh, there Emerald. I love Emerald. There are mandatory trainer fights in this game. What? have much smarter AI, much larger, stronger, and more diverse are there really teams 400? with competitive movesets and items. And eventually, you fight double battle gym leaders, legendaries, permanent weather effects, sometimes all three at the same time. <laughs> and during all of this, the game gives the player access to very little good Pokemon and moves. The champion's team has a Jirachi, a Deoxys, and a Mewtwo. But I wasn't just going to okay, beat this game. Okay, that's, yeah. I was going tough. to hardcore Nuzlocke it. Which means I have to play with the following self-imposed What's a hard, I can only catch the hardcore first Pokemon Nuzlocke. on every route. If a Pokemon faints, it's dead, and I yeah. can't use it anymore. Simple. I have to play on set mode. Yeah, I can't use I do that. Items in battle. Ooh, that's tough for me. I can't level the next gym leader. And okay, if my entire team faints and I white out, I have to you start lose. the yeah. entire challenge Pretty standard. from the very beginning. Beating this challenge took me 151 tries and over 1,000 hours. Just, the no the item thing makes it difficult. the entire year of my life. The video what? you're watching now, however, <laughs> is the story of the legendary attempt 151. I do ridiculous challenges like these all the time on my channel. I if sub like counts more, doubled since then. I'm Pokemon pretty sure. Challenges. I'm probably the best Nuzlocker in the world. And this <laughs> you want to watch what I'm like? You have an aneurysm. Oh man, I, I, I the, the latest Pokemon game I played was Platinum. That was my first Nuzlocke, and then I just did Pokemon White. Finished that last week. Oh, Dan Animations got two editors to make a video this long. That's this. It takes a lot of work to make a video Chapter this one. long. Turbulence. We begin by selecting Trico as our starter. Okay. Emerald Kaizo is interesting as all three starters are very viable, but I personally like Trico the most. Why? It's decent on Roxanne and Flannery and becomes extremely good late game if you abuse its overgrow ability and massive speed stat. You find a ton of Let's fast water Pokemon in late game, and Sceptile is one of the only consistent answers. It also gets Magical hmm. Leaf to consistently kill Bright Powder users, of which there are a right. ton. Can you tell oh. that this is going to be some real nerd shit? Yes, Emerald it Kaizo is. Emerald Kaizo is very encounter dependent. <laughs> At this point, I'm literally almost a thousand hours into this challenge, a thousand and after hours. a devastating loss in the Elite Four during Attempt 77, what? haven't made it past Gym 4 because of how bad my early game luck has been. What a fantastic day, man. I had so much fun. <sighs> the first encounter I roll is Route 103. That's brutal. To lose me really Elite Four? That can decide whether or not God. I make it past Brawly. Sunkern evolves Brawly, into some flora and sweeps Brawly, and sometimes Watson with growth setup. Spearow can evolve into Firo on <laughs> Brawly and sweep by setting up its attack stat with Rage. However, on attempt 151, I get the best encounter on this route, the 1% Talo. 
Okay. Oh. Yeah. The fact that he knows the percentages. Pillow and get the guts ability, which gives their physical moves 50% more damage when they're poisoned, burned, or paralyzed. Oh. They also get access to facade, which has its power doubled if a user has a status effect. Oh, I see what's going to happen. Damage output than anything else this early. Couple that with Swellow's massive Stab. speed stat, and you have one of the best encounters in the entire game. The one percent. The only downside is you Fair. have to be poisoned or burned for this to activate. I simply do Which this hurt. by burning Swallow on the wild items. Pokemon before every fight. And yes, before you write that comment, Guts does ignore the attack drop from Burn. A Swallow with good IVs okay. in nature will sweep a lot of important fights. It's insane for Brawly, Watson, Flannery, the mid-game in general, and is a potential Pokemon Dude, for an Elite Force. This with no this items. Halo, named Pilot, has an attack-boosting nature, as well as a high-speed IV. My hopes for this run are now very high. It feels like the end of a drought. The pressure is on <laughs> to bring this tail of past Rock Is this the only time he got first, one? I'll collect some more encounters. Route 102. It's a temp 151. Decent for Brawly. So we had less than 1%? Ride. The standard like plan now is to fish for Azumarill and Petalburg. Azumarill gets charm and is essential for Brawly and his gym trainers. Great early game tool. I don't level the my Azumarill past level 5 insane. here so that I can use it to manipulate my old Ale Town encounter. You see, when you repel, you ward <laughs> off all enemy Pokemon pieces. below your lead Pokemon's level. The different oh. encounters in Old Ale have different level distributions, and I want to use that to my advantage. By oh, with a level that's five so Azumarill smart! Up front, I increase my <laughs> chance of getting Nummel or Slugma, which are much better early game than the other options. I end up getting Slugma, which is my preferred encounter here. Okay! Oh, say, live Slugma Kaiser, reaction. Slugma evolves at level 16, so within our Roxanne level cap, okay. it has access to recovery, that's a lot of making it candies. an amazing tool for the first gym. I always fish for Magikarp on Route 104, because none of the regular encounters are good long term, and Gyarados is really useful Carpenter? as soon as you make it past Roxanne. I pick up Oddish in Petalburg Woods and Makuhita on Route 116. Pretty standard encounters. Okay. On Route 115, I can fish for a chance of either Kabuto or Ammonite, and I hit maybe the best possible Kabuto. Kabuto. Extremely high speed, and the battle armor ability. I the other call ability it Kabuto. is Swift Swim, which is nice <laughs> for a the restaurant here named that. Game, but battle and shell armor are extremely useful abilities in this Nuzlocke that you'll be seeing again and again. They prevent critical hits from happening on your Pokemon. Oh, this it's not getting Gen 5? Okay, I got it. If they are in danger of dying to a crit. In a long gauntlet of a game like Emerald Kaizo, you can almost never risk getting hit by a crit unless your other options are even riskier. Essentially, battle and shell <laughs> armor Pokemon get to safely stay in on your opponent and deal damage for much longer than those that can get crit. This Kabuto is a fantastic Pokemon for Roxanne's gym. And now, I face the okay. biggest obstacle left in the early game of this run. If I make it past here without too many bad losses, Taylor should count bad as losses. Mid -game. As a reminder, out of my 150 loss attempts, 19 were lost to Roxanne. One or two unlucky moments will send you home faster than that bouncer at the bar that told 15-year-old me that a Club Nintendo membership was, quote, <laughs> not a legal form of ID. But before I look at the Roxanne fight, let's <laughs> That's get a That's a thing? You could actually get, like, a physical the card? in Pokemon Emerald <laughs> actually works. Here's Pokemon World Champion Wolfie VGC to give you a basic rundown. Okay, Wolf? so, imagine I'm the trainer AI in Pokemon Emerald. Sure. Here's how I make my decisions. First of all, Violence. I really don't like switching Pokemon, so forget about that ever happening. Additionally, in Emerald Kaizo specifically, your enemies don't use items. So mm. just imagine I'm always on the fight option Not at all. menu. Okay, that I makes my move. things easier. The key thing to understand is that at all times, I know your Pokemon's exact stats, and therefore can calculate exactly how much damage each of my that moves seems will okay. do. However, damage in Pokemon is random. Any move can do between 85 and 100% of its maximum damage at any time. So okay. I will calculate a Some random damage roll on each of my moves and then pick whichever move did the most damage. Uh -oh. If one of my moves rolled enough damage to kill your Pokemon, stab I will and, always uh, pick that move no matter three? what. Actually, Pokemon don't die, they just faint. If multiple moves roll like kill, die. I will randomly choose between them no matter how much damage they did. I'm also pretty hmm. likely to pick non-damaging moves, depending on the HP of my Pokemon and your Pokemon. If my Pokemon is low HP, I'm more likely what to pick a chances? healing move or a like self-destructing one like Explosion. <laughs> also, if my Pokemon are slower than you, I really like using moves that slow you down, like Rock Tomb or Thunder Wave. I'll Understood. essentially never use non-damaging moves if I see a kill. If we're fighting in a double battle, oh, I'll randomly pick one of your Pokemon to do damage. Also, oh, it is on. random. So I might okay. attack the Pokemon that takes less damage over one that takes more. And that my is, white nose lock. I see a kill all, there's a triple battle. They all pick the one of my Pokemon in that case, to fight. I'll always go for the kill. Thank you, Wolfie. Roxanne leads with a good explanation. Guy. This Pokemon is extremely difficult to deal with. They're gonna always the pick violence for the most part. Extremely high defense. They're low health to do self destruct moves and self destruct. The basic strategy is to chip it with a weaker move so it stays above 50% health, avoiding and the then barrier, and then killing it with a stomp it. Move. No Pokemon you can catch before Roxanne one-shots nose pass. However, I don't have one that the effectively map. two shots it either. 
My only option is Grovile, but I need Grovile to handle her Lunatone. I decided mm. that my best option here is Macargo. My basic plan was to Macargo simply burn the Nose Pass with Will O Wisp and then stall it out with Recovers until <laughs> Nose Pass can easily be killed by Kabuto. However, I get hacks to hell and back here by Attract and Thunder Wave because Macargo is a Don't goddamn. Fall in love. I only get one move off before I have to switch Macargo out. My Macargo is now basically useless <gasps> in the leap counter, and Ooh. I have to send in Kabuto on the nose pass. Oh, okay. But I kill it, losing HP on Kabuto and getting it paralyzed. Both my Anorith and my leap counters are severely hindered, That's... and I haven't even dealt with her nose pass yet. This is really Restored. bad. Luckily, All... nose pass blows up on my switch, which leaves Meryl alive, thanks to the attack drop from Burn. I can then switch Gloom into Lilip okay. on an incoming Giga Brain. Oh, the attack. The okay. So low, I have to go for a desperation the strategy, strategy to beat Lilip. Normally, a death or two on Roxanne means that the run is so bad that I need to reset, but Tail <laughs> offsets the balance quite a lot here, and I'm willing to take some risks and make some sacrifices. So I sacrifices? Leap, some of you will die. I begin switching around between Makuhita and Gloom. As we learned earlier, the AI chooses moves by rolling damage against what's in front of it and choosing the move that dealt the most damage. So Lilip <laughs> wants to Giga Drain Makuhita, which Gloom takes, and it wants to Ancient Power Gloom, which Makuhita takes. This way, mm. I can take minimal damage per turn while stacking up Toxic on Lulip. However, uh, Lulip not only gets every away, single one tactics. of its stats raised with Ancient Power, but also crits <laughs> Makuhita. I have to Ugh. finish Lulip with Gloom and Toxic damage, and now everyone Love but that. my Grovile is at critical health. Uh, this is looking really grim. Lunatone comes out on Gloom, and I have to immediately go to Grovile, risking a crit or getting confused by confusion. Luckily, the AI rolls low on the Rock Slide damage, not only letting Grovile that survive, was low? but putting it into Overgrow. This is the Trico Line's ability that boosts your Grass-type moves by 50% oh. if you're at a third or less of your HP. Because okay. it's an Overgrow, Grovile can now safely kill the Lunatone. Anorith now comes in, and I need to get Kabuto back out. That's, Sadly, that's rough. I can't guarantee what move Anorith no items. for here, because Grovile is low HP, God. and the AI sees a kill with all of Anorith's moves. Moves. Remember, AI will always choose a move if it sees a kill with it, but since all of its moves are able to kill, it will pick one randomly. Is something going to get sacrificed here? Taking more damage is by sacrificing Gloom and resetting the tempo in my favor. Even one death on Roxanne is really bad, but again, I have the Talo. But even this sacrifice doesn't get us out of the woods yet. The Anorith has Brick Break, so if Kabuto gets oh, fully paralyzed this turn, I can't kill the Anorith and probably oh. lose the fight. But. Brick Break. Ooh! Rock to him and it lands. Okay, that's good. Oh. Okay. I then decided to try Oko. to hit through another paralysis on the relicanth because all other plays are too risky. And oh, oh and he got a crit. Oh shit! I just call him Gen Five for this point. Relicanth. Meryl then charms down Shuckle, which starts rolling out. <laughs> I try to block the damage with Makuhita, but get crit. Remember okay. that crits ignore attack drops Oof. and defense boosts. Kabuto is then luckily able to take out Shuckle and gets nice. us our first gym bed. Two deaths on Roxanne is normally a reset, but this run is about to a reset. Over, okay, right? well, it's all Chapter because he has two. the Talo. Flight of the Phoenix. I pick up a Shell Armor Clamp Earl east of Duford, which is excellent for Brawly's gym trainers. I also hear? catch a Rhyhorn and Western Tunnel, titles? which is a pretty good mid-game encounter. Trucker. And this Brawly fight will be brought to you by NordVPN. <laughs> if you don't have one of the Route 103 sweepers, this is the hardest fight of the early game. But luckily, I have the best of the best. Wait. Taylor. Taylor's facade. Jacob, does, Jacob did one of his ad reads like this. Meditate. However, he leads with a hit on top. <laughs> and everybody's like, a oh, Pokemon Taylor challenge speed. does that. Sort of how a website might block you from enjoying content via geoblocker. <laughs> yes. I need to do a little more damage to this hit on top <laughs> so Taylor can one-shot it. But also make sure that it doesn't do too much damage to Taylor when it comes in. I achieved this by seamlessly switching between Gyarados and Ryan Just like... to take turns taking rock and fighting moves. Or Gyarados six, nine, can continually nice. stack intimidate attack drops on Hitmon top. Switching almost as seamlessly Magic as I would between any of the 5200 plus servers in 59 different countries that NordVPN offers. With Hitmon top yep. and minimum attack and chipped HP, I can safely switch over to Talo and start my burn. sweep. What really enables this is not just the insane damage output, but also its fantastic speed. Not unlike the faster go connection fast. Nord offers with Nord Links. We can then take the free kills on the three Hitmons and Meditite. <laughs> I love it! Hitmon Chan and Meditite both have priority moves in the form of Mock Punch and Fake Out, but they will never select them as Brawly sees their rock moves as Just like you killed. can select. Polyrath comes oh. out next. Here's a question. What do your data on public Wi-Fi networks and Pilot the Talo have in common? What? That's right. Both need to be protected. In your data's fair. case, a VPN will help hide what domains you're visiting, <laughs> specifically from any network administrator that's, that's of the public brilliant. Wi-Fi you're using in an airport or your school, for example. Does in it Taylor's hide you case, from the government? Noctowl will I guess protect it, it from the poly I guess it could. by coming in and yeah. two-shotting it with Aerial Ace. The only thing left on Brawly's team now is his Hariyama. Ooh. I can weaken its attack. I remember this fight actually Pample. when I played Emerald. Shell armor blocks any of Hariyama's crits, just like Nord's cyber sex weight blocks ads. <laughs> Pample takes down Hariyama. <laughs> Talo has helped us unlock more of the Hoenn region, just like NordVPN allows you to unlock content from other regions. 
Your favorite Avatar. streaming site has so much more to offer if you browse from outside of your country. Inter thanks Pikachu. to Taylor for enabling an otherwise incredibly hard to achieve zero death brawly, and thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Make sure to head down to the link in the description. <laughs> they definitely got their money's worth. This video has a ton of views. You might not need a VPN right now, but if you do, think of Pilot, think of Brawly, and code Pokemon Challenges. Fair. I pierced through the newly added ice puzzle in Granite Cave, clap my rival north of Slateport, and catch they a fan clap clap my rival. I go back to Little Root to fish for my good run encounter and get a Poliwhirl. Watson is another <laughs> huge <laughs> reset point in this challenge. Normally, without Volt Absorb Lantern, my win rate is less than 7% here. All these Thunderbolts send you home faster than me after the judge acquitted me of all my charges of tax fraud. Now, Swellow is extremely good at my for the 1099s fight, right now. It doesn't guarantee us a win. It <laughs> right outspeeds one of KO's Raichu, Electabuzz, and Manic Trick, and does a massive chunk to his Ampharos. This will be the basic strategy that I can build the rest of the fight around. Okay. Watson leads good Jolteon, to know. which I can use Cacturn on. He's one of the worst Jolteon encounters out there, but he does get the job done, and he resists all of his moves. Cacturn huh? comes out of the exchange with full health, though. So Six health is using and paralyzed. Move. The safest play is to sacrifice Cacturn. It's fine, though. This Pokemon is very bad at this point. <laughs> I can now kill Lantern with the following strategy. I send out my Dawnfan, which has battle armor. Dawnfan oh. takes one Surf from Lantern and uses Endeavor, which Ooh. brings down the target. Oh, same my as the user. God. Lantern can now potentially Ice Beam, so I need to pivot through Dugong to guarantee a Thunderbolt. Oh, Dugong. As okay. I switch in my Grovile, who can then finish Lantern. If Grovile had gotten paralyzed here, the Cherry Berry it's holding would have saved me. Oh, uh, man, that, I send my that's Seeking preparation. Fire Punch. Notice that I poisoned Seeking Scolding. before this fight, so it wouldn't get burned. Instead of like Golding. I couldn't have given it a Ross Berry because it needed to be holding Soft Sand to increase its damage. Otherwise, it doesn't safely set up for a Swellow kill. I intentionally <laughs> sacrifice Seeking to bring Swellow in for oh, free. Oh no. It can then take out Ampharos, Electabuzz, and Raichu. Manager that comes Taylor out has and to be MVP. I have a realization. So, I think I forgot about Intimidate. So this is a 93.8% range. I thought I would go to 31. Mm. I mean, I really have no other play, right? Oh, I mean, this, that'll no kill. I mean, no other play. Even if I knew that that was a range, I would still always go for this. Uh. Pivot to Dawnfen does exactly nothing. Yeah, this is no other play. I literally have to do exactly this. And this is no other play in team the gamble. We just gotta hope here, boys. Prage. Ninety three percent. Oh, easy, easy. What he wasn't mean? worried at all. Mid game, baby. Woo, woo, woo. Oh, that's this, the this fourth badge. So fucking weird. <laughs> I have four deaths. I have no VA, and somehow. This is still like an 8 out of 10 run. The power <laughs> just, of Swellow, boys. Yeah, exactly. Swellow. After Watson, I pick up some more important encounters like Shell Armor Torkoal, which Ooh. will greatly help with the upcoming sun sections. After fighting my way through Gengar. the Gauntlet on Route 114, I get to the top of Mount Chimney and fight Admin Tabitha. He has a menacing 300 team. mandatory battles is crazy. Weezing, Agron, Flygon, oh, dude, and Dude, so Gutslow sick. can deal with the Dodro here. Here's where I use the Emerald AI to my advantage a little bit more. You see, in this game, enemies don't just send their Pokemon out in the order that they're put in their team. Rather, there's some internal logic at work. Here's famous YouTuber and pet bird enthusiast Jaden Animations. <laughs> Jaden. <laughs> so imagine you're facing me in a battle, and I'm acting according to the Emerald AI. Your Bulbasaur just killed my Rotata, and I have three Pokemon Fair. left on my team. A Pidgey with Blaziken? Tackle, a Charmander with Ember, and a Squirtle with Ice Beam. What a talented trainer I am. Uh -huh. To decide who I'll bring in it's next, gonna... I'll now consider the following questions. It's gonna be Charmander. One, do I have a Pokemon with a super effective move on Bulbasaur? I do. Charmander okay. with Ember and Squirtle with Ice Beam. So now I go on to question two. Which one of these Pokemon weak. types is weakest to your Bulbasaur? Charmander is a fire type, so whereas Squirtle is weak, weak to Bulbasaur's grass type. Yeah. That's right. Charmander is no it's very longer easy to understand and video. I send out Squirtle next. Only if multiple Pokemon fulfill these conditions will I decide based on my team's order. Why do I want to send in Pokemon that are weak to your Pokemon's type rather than yeah, ones why? that resist it? No one really knows. It oh. could be a bug in the code. It could be intentional to make the games a bit easier. Remember what I said about it? Maybe easy to understand. just don't get Pokemon. I don't know. All you need to know is the Pokemon with the most effective move and the least effective typing gets sent out first. The least effective Thank typing. You. Let's get back to Tabitha to see huh. us abuse this behavior in action. Tabitha Crazy. has four Pokemon on our team with super effective moves on Swellow. Manic Trick, Agron, Flygon, and Arcanine. However, both Ooh. Manic Trick and Agron resist Swellow's flying type and are no longer considered as a switch in. Flygon and Arcanine both take neutral damage from normal and flying attacks, so it now goes in team order. The amount of knowledge he has to have about Dodo, Pokemon. Another free KO. Next up is Arcanine. I didn't even know about stab Swallow, moves until my Gen 5 no Nuzlocke. Kill. Fire types in particular are very hard to do. I'm playing Pokemon Kazo. for my entire Overeem life. Buff to be a recall move instead of lowering your special attack, and they almost always carry electric and or grass type moves as coverage. 
Extreme speed is also buffed to 100 base power. This Arcanine is so scary. And this Should is where be. Torkoal comes in. Look at it. It's massive it's a mean defense dog. stat, fire resistance, and immunity to crits allows it to kill this Arcanine with two Earth powers. Next comes okay. Magnetric. I switch Parasect into Tank the Hidden Power Water, or Thunderbolt that Magnetric can go for here, and bait an Overheat. Whiskash easily oh, it takes has... it and scores a clean kill. He has the uh, moveset. With hidden power grass, Not explosion. Wheezing, Not that. Which I can easily answer with Macargo. The rock typing means I don't have to be afraid of it blowing up. I can just burn it and keep myself healthy with recover. Last thing, nice. there is a rock head aggron with head smash. This monster of a Pokemon does so much damage. Mm -hmm. but I love aggron. Aggron's amazing. Answer here. The only way I die is if he gets a quick claw proc and a crit. But Tabitha is only the opening act for the main event. Max, what? one of the hardest mid game fights. He Whoa, sports a steel, Hi. a Crobat, a clay doll, and Alakazam. Hopefully he went and healed his Pokemon. My in between? Okay, Rattler definitely seems like it. In this game. Is Earthquake. Ready to with Earthquake. Doesn't get exploded on and brings Good. out Houndoom. Maxi's arguably scariest Pokemon. Houndoom is buffed quite a bit in this game. Oh. If you didn't pick Torchic as your starter, Countering this demonic canine can be extremely tricky. Golem is so good here because he usually it? baits the hidden power grass, which is the easiest move to switch into. Normally, this would make a switch to Swallow extremely easy. However, our Golem ended up having bad special grass. defense, meaning that Houndoom sees a kill of both hidden power and crunch. Knowing this could happen, if Registeel high rolled Golem, I brought Corsola as a backup plan. This Pokemon okay. is extremely useless and can be sacrificed for a clean switch to Swallow, which can then proceed to get a kill on both Houndoom and the incoming Alakazam. Claydol okay. is up next, and it's a little bit too bulky for Swallow to kill, so I instead switch to Absol for free on the Oof. incoming Psychic and can then kill with two Shadow Balls. Sick looking Dusclops Pokemon. Seismic Toss is a super effective move and comes in next. Dusclops is also extremely buffed in this game, but Golem's God. Crobat then gets handled by Macargo, one of its only true counters at this point. I got very lucky with my encounters for this maxi fight. Uh, I guess. Lava Ridge has another very important encounter <laughs> with the Why Not Egg. Wobbuffet is one of the standard the why not? four Pokemon for this oh, round, and I hatch a pretty good one. Lava Ridge Gym has permanent sunny weather. I guess Flannery oh. at the least can offer something. Anyway, this means in all uh, fights, water moves have their damage halved, fire moves have their damage increased by half, okay, and solar beams fire instantly. Emerald Kaiser does not give the player access to any weather moves at any point in the game, so overriding Wait, does it? is out of the question. Why doesn't this it? This is probably one of the single hardest sections in the game. The sun and the fact that all these trainers have fire types with solar beam Actress. and exceptional coverage, as well as chlorophyll grass types, means your water types are pretty much useless here. Luckily, yeah, don't though, even I have Swallow. It can outshoot Swallow. and kill so Love many it. things here. I also utilize a similar strategy with Guts <laughs> Hitmonchan that can take a lot of kills with Earthquake and Sky Uppercut. The final trainer of the gym is Expert is, Keegan. He's considered by many Emerald Kaiser runners to be the most difficult non-boss fight in the game, as he has For a Chlorophyll Victory Bell with 100% accurate gunk shot and a Houndoom with devastating sun-boosted overheats. Luckily, mm. I have the one consistent counter to this Victory Bell, which Shell is Armor Torkoal. Polyroth wow. can handle the Houndoom. A tank. Flannery herself is a very polarizing gym leader in Emerald Kaiser. You Why? either have a Pokemon that can sweep most the of her Flannery team, spam. or she's the hardest gym leader in the game. They'll send you back home faster than my flight instructor did me after I told him that I wanted to get my pilot's license because of my immense interest in researching steel beam integrity. A spell with high <laughs> enough attack cleanly outspeeds and kills every member of her team. I was not expecting that. However, not not, despite not the 9 11 joke. Being attack boosting, its attack IV was quite low. Pilot only has oh, oh, a 5% chance guess the to third kill Blaziken here, fourth. even this with Silk fourth, Scarf I think. after leveling up in the fight. Because Emerald Kaiser removes the ability of the player to gain EVs, this is the most damage I can possibly You can't get EVs in Kaizos? I have to risk as I have no other option, and I lose way too Whoa, much tempo in my sweep if I switch out. One in eight for this to survive. One in, one eight. in eight for the one to die. But will it? Oh! Okay! With odds are in your dead, favor. I can now navigate around Arcanine. God, this luck this reminds me of Jacob. Heat wave and wild charge on Swallow, so Whiskash is a good switch in. Whiskash in turn now baits Arcanine <laughs> to using exactly Pokemon, Solar Beam dude. as Look at the it. only move that kills. Gyarados can come in on the Solar Beam, guaranteeing a wild charge. With wild Ooh. charge being guaranteed, Dawnfan can now safely swap in. Tank a Solar Beam without risking a crit, and endeavor Arcanine down to low health. I can then switch nice. to Rapidash on the guaranteed Heat Wave for Solar Beam and kill Arcanine with a Drill Run. Because Gyarados Has intimidated Arcanine, ever played Yu -Gi -Oh by chance? See a kill He'd probably be really good at it. Even if also Rapidash nice crit. Rapidash then baits out Charizard because it sees a super effective Earthquake. This gives us a free switch back to Swellow and I can complete the sweep. This fight is the highest point in the game for Swellow as an encounter. Being good on Brawly and Watson is nice, but no other Pokemon in the game can do oh, what Swellow God. does just, on this fight. Just zero wiping the floor with is them. close to impossible otherwise. Chapter 3. And make it double? What is it going to be double battles? Double.
We saw a triple a battle. The gargoyles gives us access to the desert, and with that mirage tower, where maybe the single most important encounter in the game awaits us. The top uh, floor of the tower has a guaranteed ooh, bag on. That's going to be can evolve turn into Salamence. Once I get the next gym badge, and will be featured in almost every battle from yep. that point onward. Salamence is champ. This is incredibly important. To maximize our catch rate, I lead with a pre-damaged Dawn fan to endeavor Bagon as Sleep. low as possible. I catch it, check its stats, and... That's naughty 31 attack! What the fuck?! No shot, Wait, is, boys. That, is it good? Wait, what? 25 HP, too. 13 speed is fine. This is the god mass. Oh, so it has Holy high attack. Shit. The highest this attack. Incredible news. And pretty Not good does it have the maximum HP. possible attack stat. Naughty is also the perfect nature, as you don't want to reduce your special attack with adamant. Salamence uses Dragon Claw and Flamethrower quite frequently in both her special moves in this game. Getting either naughty or lonely is optimal. This run oh. is officially insane. Yeah, is a double the odds have been in his strategy. favor. His goal is to skill swap his own slacking with his Espeon to remove slacking's otherwise debilitating Truand ability and make it a full threat with the stats of a legendary Pokemon. And However, what? there's oh, a very slacking consistent is a strategy for beating him, and he's probably the easiest gym leader How in the game because make... of it. You see, Norman has How a Snorlax whose only fight. damaging move is Snore. It can use this after putting itself to sleep with rest, but if you manage to have him send this out as early as possible and just never damage it, you can completely focus on the other side of the battle and are essentially playing a 2v1 the entire time. <laughs> the tricky part is getting Snorlax out early. As you can see, its only damaging move is a normal type move, which it doesn't yeah. hit anything super effectively, so baiting it out seems oh, impossible. Yeah. However, hmm. there's another quirk in the Emerald AI I can abuse here. Here's oh, famous God. YouTuber and wildlife Who? expert Tierzu to explain. Tierzu. So, imagine you're fighting me in a Pokemon I don't battle, think I've reacted and I'm Tierzu behaving before. just like the Emerald AI would. Your EV just killed my Rattata, and I have the following team. <laughs> Always a, a Charmander with Ember, a Pikachu with Thunderbolt, and a Squirtle with Water Gun and Tail Whip. None okay. of my Pokemon have a super effective move against your Eevee, so the so usual process that we learned from Jaden earlier does not apply. Yeah. In this case, however, I will not simply send in the next inline Charmander, but what instead would you send? go into what's called Phase 2. I will look at the Pokemon I just lost, Rattata, okay, and consider it its typing. I will then look at my team and see if any of them have a move of that type. In this case, normal. What? This works even for moves that don't do the, any damage. Based off moves? So I will notice that Squirtle has Tail Whip and send it as move. my next Pokemon. Let's make things a little more complicated so and he's consider gonna abuse a double this. battle situation with similar teams. You have an Eevee and a Butterfree out and just killed my Rattata. The process for me is the same here except I have two Pokemon on your side to consider. To figure oh. out which Pokemon to base my decision on, is I will simply the kill? flip a coin. In this example, it's if a coin, coin lands on heads Don't on the left ask side, Jaden I will choose Eevee, and the logic will be the same as in our single battle example. Squirtle will come out. If the coin lands on tails, I choose the right side, Butterfree, which, which will be make Charmander. me see Ember as a super effective yep. move, and I will send out Charmander. Whether Charmander or Squirtle is sent out in this case is dependent on RNG and not fully predictable oh, for you, gosh. as you don't know beforehand where my coin will land. Let's There's so many variables, that's why I took 151 a attempts. Type, and the only psychic type move on Norman's team is Snorlax's Rest. In order to consistently get Snorlax out as soon as possible, I would need to kill Espeon in a situation where neither of the two Pokemon I have out on the field are, are super effectively yeah. by his Kangaskhan, Swellow, or Tauros. No matter where the coin lands, Maybe Norman Snorlax. will next see a super effective move. <laughs> Slacking and Snorlax. Two and want to send out Snorlax because he sees the psychic typing. That's the Norman strat. At the same time, you also need to avoid the enemy slack and killing you with its enormous attack stat. Let's see how I yeah. achieve this on run 151 in particular. We lead Swellow and Blastoise, both of which are not weak to any of the move typings Norman has in the back. Blastoise yeah, works just like a fake out and Swallow takes out the Espeon, bringing out Snorlax. We're in a 2v1, and Slaking is loafing around the next turn. Uh -huh. have ample time to do massive damage to Slaking with Swallow, as I get Blastoise out for Guts Hitmonchan. Swallow kills Slaking, okay. and because in Gen 3 double battles, you instantly switch in a new Pokemon after one dies, Wait, Hitmonchan instantly? gets a free oh. attack off on the incoming Swallow, almost killing it. My Swallow at speeds and finishes Sky normal Swallow, uppercut. and okay. Hitmonchan kills the incoming Kangaskhan. Tauros sees a kill on Swallow, and not on Hitmonchan, so I know he will always target Swallow slot. I can switch out Swallow oh, for Dawn Fan while safely going the 1-2 sense. Sky Uppercut into Mach Punch combo with Hitmonchan. All I have to do now is PP stall the Snorlax and a 5th Gym Badge. PP stall. Mine. After normal, okay. I get Surf, so I can catch a ton more encounters. Notable here is Swift Swim Relicanth, a strong contender Swift for the Elite Four team. And Kingdra, who is Historian. extremely consistent with a phenomenal defensive type. Midwife! There's a problem with the encounter routing now, though. Getting Relicanth here means I missed my last chance to catch a Quillfish at a low enough level where it hasn't yet learned Explosion. Quillfish is an incredibly uh, useful encounter, and I'm no longer guaranteed to catch one. Not only that, but trying to catch it is extremely dangerous now because its explosion it can, can kill not explode. only itself, 
but also the Pokemon I'm trying to catch it with. Yep. Notice how I haven't used Sceptile at all? This is because Same. having Swellow in the mid-game allowed me to delay my Grovile evolution, giving me access to Leaf Blade before the Winona level cap. I can use this in combination with intentionally damaging Sceptile before a fight to one-third of its HP to get into Overgrow range and one-shot a bunch of things in Weather Institute. Even stuff like Melodic yeah. just gets obliterated here. The AI works in my favor too, as it wants to send in Pokemon with Ice Beam or Bug moves that are as weak to grass as possible, which means that Sceptile usually gets two or more kills at the start of a Team Aqua fight. This That's is good. why I picked Trico. A lot of the yeah. players around Fortress City because it seems have like weird really useful. that are a little annoying Ditto. to play around, but usually pose no big threat to my team. A misplay on my part gets me a pretty unlucky death here. I use Hitmonchan and... to deal with his trainer's okay. Shedinja. However, Shedinja oh, has Shininja. a focus band, which gives it a 10% chance of survival lethal damage. I hit the Shedinja while hit well, it's already is dead, in range, sure. and my opponent hits the 1 in 160. It's unlucky one that in I one hundred sixty focus band and the crit range beforehand, and I should have played around this. But the sloppy losses don't end here. My plan to take out huh. this trainer slacking in Winona's gym was to teach my Pidgeot fly, and oh. just fly up oh. on the turn he attacks. But, well, what? Pidgeot for slacking? Am I fast enough? Yeah, I'm fast enough. Okay. Are you fast enough? Are you oh. fast enough? You can not start oh, off with it. I didn't teach fly. Oh, I didn't teach fly. Oh, I'm so sorry, Pidgeot. I must have been eating a chicken sandwich when planning for this fight or something. Now, Winona. This is maybe my favorite fight in the entire game. It Why? seems terrifying at first. It really tests your knowledge of the AI and double battle mechanics, and there are so I, many different strats that can get you through this fight. It feels so satisfying to outnavigate all three legendary birds and double battles and not lose a single mon. If you don't prepare perfectly, however, she will send you home faster than the ticket attendant at AMC that told me I would be able to go see Cars 3 because my shirt was, quote, inappropriate, well, even was... though I had explained to her that I thought I just want the cussy was just them misspelling the word Gucci, and besides, other theaters let me bring a bucket of sausage water all the time because it's clearly a drink, which it states on the AMC website you are legally allowed to bring in. But then there was a line for you can bring a drink in. People were like, hey, what's all the hold up? Oh, why does it smell so much like hot dogs? So I turn around and I yell, it's my goddamn right as an American to drink three gallons of bratwurst broth to the showing of the sequel of my favorite animated movie franchise, if I so please. Is it actually then cars? people started throwing their M&Ms at me, and some of it got in my eye, and when it caused, it caused my infection to flare back up, and so I call my doctor, and she's like, slow down, what the hell is a cussy? The big problem is <laughs> yeah, is what? Articuno. Most Pokemon that I have a Articuno holographic first edition one of those. Get by Articuno itself with HP grass or an ice move. The core strategy on Winona is then to try to bait out the Articuno and target the mm -hmm. slot it is being sent oh, into before it even toxic. gets attack off. Just like it oh, no, it wasn't toxic. Norman. Let me introduce it you to the toxic. key piece in the Winona strategy. A wimpy Parasect will help us bring down her mighty team <laughs> we'll of legendary birds in this fight. He's not actually going to ever attack, but he will be tasty. Tasty bait that I will dangle in front of her Pokemon to manipulate the AI into behaving exactly how I want it to. So I leave oh. Parasect and Golem. Winona sees a kill on Parasect with the flying moves of both of her elite Pokemon, sees uh, no kill on Golem. She will therefore so always attack Parasect do about slot, I can safely switch him out for Rhydon, while Golem lets out a massive head smash, okay. removing Zapdos from the field. Both of my Pokemon are the same type now, so I don't care where Winona's coin lands for deciding her switch in target. She will always send out Flygon okay. because she Hit sees a super rock. effective grass move. Oh. Everything is going exactly to plan at this I think point. it's Flying I'm Grass, isn't it? Earthquake or is it Dragon? Hidden Power Grass and switch out for two Pokemon that can take both, Parasect and Salamence. Salamence gets a Doesn't vital intimidate on Aerodactyl and can now begin setting up the Articuno kill. Again. Winona sees a kill with both of her Pokemon on Parasect, with Parasect HP Flying and Flamethrower bait. respectively, and Salamence is safe from attacks this turn. I switch Parasect out for Kabutops, who will tank both of these moves, while Salamence yeah, because prepares they for a kill targeting, on Flygon, yep. Air Slash. Dragon Claw is technically more damage, but a crit from Dragon Claw will kill Flygon early, which would mess up my strategy completely. Flinched. I want Flygon to super after this. Super effective, so that means it's not Air Dragon. Air Slash has a chance to flinch, which can save Kabutops some HP. Aerodactyl Earthquakes again, but thanks to Intimidate and Battle Armor, Kabutops is pretty safe. Oh, okay. Salamence kills it was Flygon, super effective and having Kabutops still. and Salamence guarantees that Winona goes to either Articuno or Moltres, depending on where the coin lands here. The Both coin. of which will take the massive coin. damage and slowdown from the Rock Tomb Kabutops is targeting the Flygon slot with. I prefer her to send an Articuno here, though, and that's exactly what happens. Oh, Salamence it went exactly how you wanted. Slow down Articuno Jeez. and not dead to Ice Shard. I have a safe kill with Rock Slide while Kabutops and Rock Tomb the Pokemon coming in on Articuno's slot. After being in Kabutops to safety with a mildly risky Scissor Switch, I can eventually kill Aerodactyl and Crobat. This leaves Moltres, scissor killed my which Magmar. is completely outmaneuvered by switching between Rhino and Parasect crit, kills, X as Mence takes out Winona's final Pokemon or X -Cross and gets or something. our sixth gym badge. 
This would feel so sweet. This could have been a zero death Winona split, which is insane. Think Whatever. Gambling? Man. One of my favorite split of the game. That's all that matters. What, what was that? The what, way, was that like a start something? Running this game for yourself, I highly recommend joining my Discord. I have a dedicated channel to EK Nuzlocking that has all the relevant resources and a ton <laughs> of people willing that, to help fish? you out. Link is in the description. <laughs> also, subscribe while you're down there. Chapter 4. I you might have to. Fire. I might have to watch more there's videos water. from you. There's there's also water. Don't put all of that on the title card. Yeah, in Little Cove City, I play some Minesweeper. I do read every single comment, counter, so but, I'll respond well, to a lot so you know I'm reading. I don't just say that. Unlucky. I go a minus two in encounters. We're officially in what hmm. is considered the second hardest section of the game, just behind the Elite Four. Team oh. Magma Hideout. This place is Flannery's gem. This is where you find ground on. Some experimental mix of DMT and leaded gasoline before putting together the trainers. You face far more powerful Pokemon with way more RNG heavy it's damage. Edge. Focus bands, bright powders, camera quick up. claws are everywhere. Ugh. On average, one Pokemon per team can explode. Some of them with choice bands. Ball girl Several fainted. Trainers have Rip. unusual AI patterns that can trip you up. It's considered X's an initiation ritual in Emerald Kaizo to lose either your Salamence or your entire run to this place. Oh, it's that like was a different run. Okay, run I was so concerned. Forsaken Cave. I myself had essentially lost two attempts here. Oh, that the was Pokemon that helped yeah, the most okay. in this that was section. 66. Are chlorophyll grass types that get double speed in the sun, Flygon, Ghost types and Shell Armor Torkoal. Of all of these, I have exactly one. This section basically okay. requires you to sacrifice Pokemon. Sacrifice oh, great. Pokemon is strong because it allows you to reset tempo in your favor within a fight. Get in a Pokemon for free, you otherwise wouldn't be able to get in undamaged. Yeah. If you're not doing that, you're probably playing oh, too risky and are making Wukong. mistakes. You get a Sun lot Wukong. of encounters in EK, and you want to start using the bad ones as a resource to protect your better encounters starting yeah. at this point. In the end, all you it can do is you lead four or six Pokemon anyway. Exactly. Let's look at the fight against... Oh, I need six. six. My has a white claw. Nuzlocke, People I had nine living Pokemon at the end, and if this could 19 explode, dead ones? Salamence would easily deal with this. Normally, what I would do in this situation is to manipulate the AI in a way where it will send out its Pokemon with Explosion last. If the enemy has no other Pokemon left, he can never choose Explosion if he has any other move. Oh, really? Unfortunately, Magma Grunt 6 has a jump bluff with no damaging moves which can never be baited up before Torkoal. He will always have this in the back of his team, and Torkoal will always be able to blow up. None of our Pokemon oh, oh, can live all four moves without risking Quick Claw, so I decided to risk the most expendable Pokemon, Azumarill. Torkoal Ball Girl, on which turn one, I, taking down I believe that, yeah, that. There's no safe way for me to play around this death, but like I said, you can utilize strategic sacrifices like this starting in yeah, the to keep your exactly. important Pokemon safe. Later, Choice Band Explosion kills my Macargo with a crit. Had I gotten a ghost type in Mount Pyre, this clade would have been completely free, but as it is, I have to risk the He did here. say, but like, every trainer has a Pokemon That's that all explodes. I lose to Magma Grunts in Hideout, which is actually kind of insane, all things considered. Both of these Pokemon are very expendable beyond this point, and I can move into Admin Courtney with my spirit. Admin Courtney. In the glaring sun, Courtney rolls up with the following team. Charizard, what? Cast Form, Regirock, Kangaskhan, Venusaur. She's just chilling with a Regirock? I with Swellow, <laughs> because of course I do. One shotting her Charizard and bringing out Venusaur. The sweep is stopped here because One Venusaur's chlorophyll ability makes it faster than Pilot. Torkoal is the only decent, consistent counter I have to this monster of a Pokemon, so I switch it in, tanking the incoming Weather Ball. Torkoal gets put to sleep, but I'm prepared for this eventuality with a Chesto Berry. Torkoal now just needs to hit a 75% range. Of all things. Which it does. Kangaskhan nice. comes in next. It carries Fake Out, which the AI will pretty much always go for if it doesn't see a kill. I can safely switch oh, Donphan okay. to a low damage Fake Out and use our patented Endeavor Strat to bring Kangaskhan down to low HP. Pivoting mm -hmm. through Rhydon allows a safe switch back to Swellow on Kangaskhan's Earthquake Endeavor is and such gives a me pain. two kills on both Kangaskhan and Cast Form. Courtney now puts her massive Regirock between her and my Swellow, and Pilot needs to exit this lane as soon as possible. Rhydon comes in on the Ancient Power, luckily avoiding the 10% boost. I know that Regirock can either use Counter or Critical Earthquake of course. Gen However, 5. Rhydon really falls I mean, off at this three, point, I know. and is kind of outclassed by Golem anyway, so I'm very much willing to risk it to keep better encounters safe. It deals a massive blow to the Legendary, and goes down heroically to Counter. So we can now come in and revenge kill Regirock, baiting Flamethrower from her last Pokemon, Salamence. Salamence. Our cast form can now safely switch in and ice beam the Salamence down. Yep. The way to Maxi Because Fairy's not added Rhydon. yet, and it's Maxi not worth risking your own dragon. Let's be the hardest on. Lead four fight in the game. A single crit on this fight will destroy most teams going up against him and send you back home faster than my fourth grade gym teacher after I shit my pants. Wait, does oh. it really say that in the script? What the f Maxi leads with an Intimidate Tyranitar followed by Flygon, oh, Gengar, Entei. Arcanine, Exeggutor, and Entei. Arcanine Entei. and Entei both support the lovely 100 base power extreme speed. Entei and Chlorophyll Exeggutor both run Ancient Power. If either of these get a single Ancient Power boost, you will wipe. Entei also has both really? Special Attack and Sacred Fire, which is basically a well, fire it's like, blast what, 10 that chance? Miss so. and burns 50% of the time in Emerald Kaizo. 
This legendary dog is an absolute menace. It yeah. does not fuck around. The movie is great, though. wipe you if it scores a single crit on you. Most fighting types in this game can't kill Tyranitar after an Intimidate. This is why many runs choose to use their White Herb here, which neutralizes the Intimidate attack drop. However, oh. you only get one White Herb throughout the entire run, and it's incredibly useful on Glacier. use it here? Fight arguably harder than Maxi 2. I find a different strategy here. Luckily, my Polyrath's IVs are just enough to outspeed and kill Tyranitar with superpower, even oh. for the Intimidate. This baits an Arcanine, who usually can only Solar Beam here, but what the is, AI is really weird about Solar Beam in the sun, so it will sometimes why doesn't not it? choose it despite it being the highest damage. Wait, level. why would it not? This, is it because it's not, it doesn't realize it's a sunny day and it doesn't have damage. to charge? This switch is still important, though, as I want to use Salamence's Intimidate to reduce Arcanine's damage potential with extreme speed yep. to discourage Maxi from using it later on in the fight. Rapidash can then switch in on the guaranteed HP ice and drill run. I didn't now make I videos on my Nuzlocks. Kill here, but I don't want to bring out Executor yet. It like, would want to I absolutely need Rapidash, to which make risks actual videos breaking down the streams. I have them all saved. Instead, I just have to edit them all, which would be which a lot. Now guaranteed to beta Solar Beam after taking more chip damage into Salamence, scoring a kill with Rock Slide and baiting out Maxi's Flygon. I have to sacrifice a Pokemon here, as oh. nothing can tank a crit Draco Meteor from Flygon. Did I imagine oh, that a Draco Meteor? Meteor what a move. It's 140 base power recoil. Absolute insanity. Rapidash, as most Dead. fire types, is pretty low value after this section and pulls a Bruce Willis, sacrificing itself to the Meteor. Cast from Kino oh, uh, and Armageddon. With Ice Beam, That's not out Executor. Chlorophyll proud. outsped here. However, Cast Form needs to stay in and dodge a crit for this fight to run smoothly. Executor currently sees Psychic as doing more damage than Ancient Power, and I would really like to keep it that way to not get Omnibus swept. <laughs> Cast Form yeah. dodges the crit yeah. and gets a kill with a massive damage weather ball. It does, however, get its special defense. Just not taking Pet any Executor chances. The crit here. I had a pretty safe contingency plan with Salamence. Maxi needed to get two crits in a row here to end my run. Next is Boss Monster Ante. If he sees a kill with extreme speed, like what was the actual like move, time he will always for these? Go for it, even if like did he have to kill. look up what they know, or However, did he just know it off memory? I see that only half of all potential extreme speed damage rolls can kill Cast Form at this point. So here's what the decision tree for Ente looks like. Half of the time, it will find the killing E speed roll on Cast Form and simply go for it. In case it doesn't find the roll, it'll see a kill with either Sacred Fire because of the earlier special defense drop or Ancient Power, so it'll use either of those moves 25% of the time. Okay. I'm in trouble if he 1 in 16 <laughs> maximum rolls both one in Sacred 16. Fires on Torkoal, or finds the 10% Omni Boost on Ancient Power. I don't have to worry about mm. crits because of Shell Armor. Both of these cases lose me the run right then and the there. The entire this run, over. This will over. 3% of the time here. However, switching to Torkoal, I get the I best mean, it's super possible low. result with him just going for the extreme speed. I can now simply explode my own Torkoal, Wiping Entei off the face of the earth and a sacrifice. sacrifice from the turtle. Finally, Alex well can outspeed and kill Maxi's Gengar. Two deaths nice. to Maxi. Five in Alec total Alex is really pretty fast. damn good, especially considering the quality of Pokemon I lost. All this without a ghost type or a victory bell on my team. I'm past one of the hardest parts of the game and have all the important tools money. to go forward. It's officially a run. Septile gets a couple of nasty it's one been officially run for a while, I think. Hideout, I mean, he didn't make Dilly for way eastward. Chapter 5. Around the world in 15 encounters. <laughs> Around the world in 15 days Beating or whatever. Is that that? opens up almost the entire rest of Hoenn to me. There are a lot of encounters to get here. I gain access to Route 122, 124, 125, 126, okay. 127, that 128, means a bunch of new Pokemon. 130, 131, 132, 133, as well as Moss Deep City, Shoal Cave, and Pacific Log Town. And also the Super Rod, which now gets me access to the Super Rod encounters I want on Route 108 and Fair. 122. I've been delaying these so far. For uh, all these routes, I need to decide. Smart. If That's what I always do. Rod, First time I get to a route, I don't immediately catch a Pokemon. Counter, and in what order to get them in. This is called encounter routing, and it's a basic nuzlocking skill if you're playing with duplicate claws. Imagine yeah, a scenario in which you have two routes. Route one has 99% Rattata and 1% Mewtwo. <laughs> route oh. Has 50% Rattata and 50% Pidgey. You're playing with duplicate claws, so duplicate encounters can be skipped. Got a route two you before route one. Encounter. What route should you get your encounter on first? Route two. Write your answer in the comments now. Okay, ready? Route two. Obviously, you would get your route two encounter first. In hopes that if it's Rattata. If you get Rattata. the 50% Rattata encounter, you are now guaranteed a Mewtwo, a Mewtwo on route yep. one. Getting route two, therefore, gives Playing you a 50% the chance of getting a Mewtwo. Route one will only give you a 1% chance of getting a Mewtwo. Now, expanding this principle onto the remaining routes of the game is what makes this section yeah, so Yeah, what Pokemon can you find? The biggest problem is that this culprit will keep cropping up. And cool it'll have explode exploded. And essentially cost me an entire encounter once again. The biggest priority, though, is maximizing our chance to get our next Elite Four member, Shell Armor Slowbro. It gets the healing move Slack Off, the Shell Armor ability, which prevents crits, and the move Recycle, meaning it can regenerate Lepa Berries, making it by far the best stall Pokemon really? in the game. Really? Especially when you can't use items. for coming up with this Elite Four strategy. I start by super rotting on Route 108, guaranteeing a Whalemore encounter Whalmer. because the okay. only other encounter here is Sharpedo, which I already have. I now have an OP Whalelord of my own. 
Route 126 <laughs> gets us a guaranteed slow poke with the old rod. The problem is that with shell armor rod. is not guaranteed. Slowpoke can either have the ability own tempo, which it will keep throughout evolution, or oblivious, which becomes shell. Can armor. you catch a slow bro? Own tempo though? prevents a Pokemon from being just confused. Up on the screen. I can therefore just check the slowpoke for the proper ability by confusing it. If it can't be confused because of own tempo, I kill it and try again on a different route. Oh, However, a different route. I win okay. the coin flip for the ability on the first try. You test and see if it's one ability. of the most important Pokemon. Nurse, the slow bro. We pick up the Nurse. guaranteed shelter by fishing with an old rod in Moss Deep. This prevents exploding cloisters from being our potential encounter in the future. Route 125 gives us a guaranteed Celio. We then try to maximize our chances of encountering Wait. Glalie and Shoal Cave, as an exploding Glalie is usually the safest Tate and Liza strategy. Instead, I mean? pick up a Pillow Slime, which is completely useless. Slime. I have an 88% chance to encounter Lantern surfing on Route 128, and but I get it. Do you get it? Oh, Luckily, 88%? It's Fair. Too, but I would have caught Illuminate here, too, just to remove it from the encounter. Voice table. actor. Now, it all becomes about maximizing our chances to catch a Quillfish. This improves our chances of getting both Gengar and Mischievous, Ooh. and gives us Quillfish itself, which not only is excellent in the upcoming rain sections, but is also a fantastic explosion Pokemon for double Sacrifice. battle boss fights. So here's how I set up the optimal Quillfish route. I super on Pacific Log Town for a guaranteed Omastar. Okay. I actually get Swift Swim here too, which is perfect. Now that I have Omastar, I can guarantee the Mantine on 129 with the Old Rod. And look at this, oh, a lot of also routes. Swift Swim. Now that I have both Mantine and a Tentacruel from earlier in the run, I can guarantee the Quillfish encounter on Route 127. The Pokemon to defuse the Sea Mine is going to be Blastoise. Like, does he, he need to research this, or does he just only know it? To explosion crit. If I do lose Blastoise, it's like, not seriously. A I catch Quillfish, and it's Swift Swim as well. This is quite possibly the best day of encounters I've ever had in Emerald Kaizo. Having a, a Quillfish now guarantees I've never a had super sushi in my life. ghastly encounter on Route 122. I pick up a pretty useless guaranteed Pelipper on 124 <laughs> and useless. Artillery on 130. Route 132 gives me a guaranteed Staryu thanks to having Quillfish okay. and Mantine. Starmie is excellent. Not being able to get it because I hadn't gotten the Quillfish yet would have been disastrous for the run. 131 gives me a very nice 83% chance to encounter another ghost 80. type in Mischievous. Which there we go. In the water? It. The last route is 133, which I delayed because the only encounter there is Lapras, which is very Ooh, dangerous. love Lapras. And doesn't provide anything right now. It right if now. I end up needing this, I can always come back when my level cap is higher. Okay. Chapter six. I've planted five bombs around Hoenn. Can you find them all? I don't Let's think you, I don't show. think you want to find Legend bombs here personally. Mandatory double battles that utilize some sort of gimmicky mechanic. There's a lot of pivoting, pre-damaging the big kills into a switch, and then quite a few of the battles I use skill swap Mischievous to my advantage. On the fourth battle, Grumpig, here, I like lose my artillery. About I have to sacrifice ever. it to save Caesar from having to dodge a crit. There's some more cheesy stuff like Parish Song spam plus Shadow Ooh. Attack Pokemon, but if you plan for these correctly, it's really not a big deal. Let's go to the uh, main yeah, event Parasong. here with the Twins Tate and yeah. Liza. Can't Believe kill Lapras they're a double yet. Battle team with Latias I'm pretty sure Jacob used Parasong. Yep. Mm. However, at this point in the game, the jet I get shifted into a much more offensive gear. I'm very deep into the game, and I'm past the arguably hardest pre-Elite 4 section in Maxi 2. I can sacrifice Maxi a ton two. of Pokemon. That's a lot of Pokemon. Really nilly That's throw a lot. Any old Pokemon in these boss fights. There's still some incredibly difficult sections coming up. But if you know enough about the games to understand what's valuable and what isn't, you can just rush these late game double battles down. Also, Elite fun fact, uh, for sure, Whale Lord and Skitty can be That's bred right. together. I'm playing to explode my Gengar. Latios and Latios <laughs> both go down, and Cloyster's massive defense stat and battle armor ability mean that it always lives the blow here. I can then Everybody's so happy. Somebody's going to sacrifice and the chat's going crazy. And Medicham. But here's the plot twist. It's still turn one. Cloyster hasn't even attacked yet. That's right. Because there it automatically happened. was a second happened. bomb this entire time. <laughs> Kate and Liza are down to two Pokemon. Now I understand the five bombs. I killed two thirds of their team in one turn. The gym leaders now have Starmie and Jirachi left, which are still not trivial to deal with. Jirachi has Serene Grace, doubling his chance to get Ancient Power boosts at 20%. Uh. If it gets any of these off, Jirachi can still easily sweep my team. Yes. I target Starmie down with Thunderbolt and Shadow Ball, killing it and only leaving the Steel Psychic Mythic on the field, which does not it really get an AP boost. Still psychic, Raichu now leaves the field for Dawn Titan as I get a Shadow Why? Ball defense drop on Jirachi with Mistrevis. Did I mention that Shadow Ball is changed to drop defense instead of special defense in this ROM hack? I love this. It makes so much more sense with Ghost being a physical type. There are small uh, details in this run. Okay. It's really what makes it such an amazing game. Jirachi gets uh, an attack boost with Meteor Mash and brings Mistress oh, no. red. Not ideal attack whatsoever. Okay. I thought but it was mine in the boost. Ancient Power and Meteor Mash on Mistress now. I want to Earthquake with Dawn Fan to get the kill, but this will hit my side It's almost like well. a game of chess. The logical choice is to switch to Salamence, who is immune to Earthquake, but Salamence will die if Jirachi gets a crit. The other play is to use Pain Split with Mistress, which will heal it out of Ancient Power range, but not out of Meteor Mash range. Oh, Mistress will have a 50% chance 
chance to die. As Mischievous is my only ghost type for the foreseeable future, I decided to make the safest play and sacrifice Raichu with much Fair. less value at this point. It's all about protecting your important encounters. And yeah, you gotta save him for the end. I take the seventh badge. Time to clear oh, up the okay. space center from Team Magma. I assume they want to crash the moon into Earth to create more land or some shit. I really don't know. I don't know what the dialogue is. Is that their plan? One I don't more know. Time here, I mean, uh, I think that would hurt the Tabitha oceans. While we're joined Wouldn't by it? Steven. You can only bring three Pokemon to this fight. Luckily, this is where Shell Armor Slowbro really starts to shine. Unfortunately, though, Steven is still a them? useless piece of shit. Oh, you do pick Our them. Stormy takes out Tabitha's Gengar while Tauros hits with an earthquake. Wow. Stormy then hits an incredibly important hydro pump on Tabitha's Charizard. Missing this hydro pump would have gotten me into very hot water. Get it? Do, do you get it? Hot water? Yeah, yeah, I get it. Because I have a team of water types, and it's a fire type. Do you get it? Do you get it's a it's like a it's like a pun like a like a play on words. Uh huh. Like, do you get it? Do you get the joke? Yeah. Do you get the fucking joke? Yeah. Do you fucking get the joke? Tabitha sends in her salamence while Steven just oh, mindlessly is clicking fucking fly with his Aerodactyl every turn. Starmie still isn't dead to any double edge ranges from Taurus, so I click Ice Beam to kill Salamence. Ice Beam kills Salamence. Takes out That's Steven's useless Aerodactyl and replaces it Ooh. with a much more useful Starmie as I swap out my Starmie for Slowbro. Can then easily tank and take down Maxi's three remaining Pokemon. Yeah, that was easy. We now Those like the bosses aren't even that hard. City. Here awaits us the next member of the Elite Four team. I can guarantee a low tad Lombre or Ludicolo encounter here if I repel with a level 60 Pokemon. Because Parasect isn't great after Winona, I intentionally never level it after this point to just keep it at level 60. I catch it in, its stats are really bad. Ludicolo's oh, stats nice. are some of the most important on an Elite Four team. This one doesn't even have enough speed to outspeed Glacia's Dugong and not enough special attack to one so or Swampert with Magical Leaf. Which are the two major things it needs to do in this fight. Yeah. Let's put it this way. <laughs> Someone choosing their Pokemon stats for the Elite Four would never have gotten this Ludicolo. Wait. What's... Wait. What? No. Wait. No, wait. I can't. Oh. No. Oh. Not again. Oh. Not again. Not again? Not, Not again. again. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's okay. What was that a reference to? It's okay. You'll be different. This, this time will be different. You'll be different this time. It's definition I'll of insanity. Safe, bartender. Next up, is <laughs> what? Cameron, which has permanent rain akin to the sun in Flannery's gym or Magma Hideout. My headcanon is that it's raining inside here because the cave is under the ocean and the water is leaking through the ceiling. These trainers well, have tons well, of powerful water. I've been in a cave that swift swim ability drip water. and electric types of thunder that are guaranteed to hit in the rain. This is also where I get a guaranteed muck encounter. Things go south on Grunt 2 here. Donphan is able to take out the first two Pokemon, bringing out Golduck, who sits up a calm mind. It crits my Waylord, lives on actual I should have literally Waylord. 1 Isn't HP, like the biggest Pokemon and ever. puts my lantern back to back to back. I decided I'd have to sacrifice wow. my Cloud here to get a kill with Donphan's Ice Shard. In situations like this, it's extremely important not to let your nerves get to you. That gold deck could have potentially ended Everything's going wrong. had I not played carefully and cut my losses by sacrificing something. Yeah. But a much, much greater disaster was looming on the horizon. Uh, Cue what? the fourth grunt fight. He has a slaking. Oh, Mr. Riss pivots into the guaranteed double edge, setting up a loaf turn for free switch to Swallow, who just what outspeeds is with Fly on the turn the slaking can attack. I even remember oh, to actually teach Fly this time. So take the free kill on oh. Slaking, which basically I into... Just fly. Wait, sorry. Wait, what? Wait, wait what? That's yeah. big. Thunder can hit you when you're flying. Wait, it can? I simply forgot about that when planning for this fight. I never Swell knew that. Swell was a core member of my plan to lead four team, and by far my strongest Pokemon for single battles. Oh my god. This is really bad. This run just went from amazing to having a good chance of dying in the, the one percent chance. And any additional mistake of this ban him might mean that I don't even get there in the first place. It's all right. I still have an amazing Salamence and Shell Armor Slowbo. Things could be much worse still. It could be. There's also one more potential encounter to pull us out of this. It's okay. No time to question my moves. I'll stick to the path that I choose. To understand why these rain sections are relatively easy compared to the sun sections, you have to understand. He knows all this. So I know that stab was a thing until in the rain yourself. A couple you weeks catch ago, a ton of water types in this game, <laughs> and a lot of them get access to Swift Swim. On this fight against Admin Shelly, I use Swift Swim, Relicanth, Ludicolo, and Quillfish to cut Shelly's team into sushi. <laughs> On to the absolutely terrifying Archie fight. This fight is so so scary. It's still raining here, and he leads with both Raichu oh. and Suicune, who either want to set up call yeah. mines or just immediately yeah, those, your team those two. Orbit. Where's Inbei? Here's how I got around them. We lead with both Muck and Omastar. Notice that Why? Omastar is not at full HP. This is because I want it to always be dead to hidden power grass from both Raikou and Suicune to keep Muck safe on turn one. Uh, also notice okay. is only level 75. This is deliberate as I want to exactly always kill Raikou and never kill Suicune. So why are they level 75? So that seems really her. high. We use dive on Omastar to dodge the incoming hidden powers as Muck explodes, killing Raikou and putting Suicune into red HP. The positions that my Pokemon are in are actually really important here. Had Muck died in slot 2, 
Archie would consider its corpse for the switch in logic half the time. Because Muck died in slot 1, I get to choose my replacement first, and I choose Relicand. I have a Meaning flight that no matter what a few Archie's hours. coin lands on, he will always send in Dragonite to replace Raikou. Oh, my favorite Relicand Pokemon of all time. Dragonite with Head Smash. Gotta love Dragonite. Omastar Dive picks off Suicune bringing out Metagross and Quillfish for Archie. Relicamp is too valuable to risk at this point, so I switch it for Ludicolo to tank the Quillfish and Metagross attacks. Metagross wastes a turn protecting while Omistar gets some chip damage with Ancient Power. Quillfish is now guaranteed to gunshot Ludicolo as it sees a kill. Metagross will uh, either Earth Power Omistar or Sludge Bomb Ludicolo. Magneton comes in to the poison moves for Ludicolo while Omistar the, Ancient Powers again and gets Do the Omnibus. trainer AIs get fast more Pokemon consistent the field. in future games, I imagine? Let's go! Magneton is pre-damaged to always beta kill from Metagross and Quillfish, so I can simply switch back to Ludi on another Hydro Pump Earth Power combo while Their Omastar gets the crazy kill on Quillfish. For this stage. Ignoring the Metagross in this fight is extremely good because half the time it will click protect Must anyway, part of the Kaiser. so it doesn't really have a lot of damage potential. I was very much planning to sacrifice Omastar earlier in this fight, but it really wants to keep going. Ludicolo <laughs> doesn't want to die. This time for Slowbro, who can tank anything Archie will throw at it. Omastar now dodges a Yawn from Kingdra, Dodge gets even nice. more damage done. Slowbro Psychic brings Kingdra down to red health. Slowbro now leaves everything, even Draco Meteor from Kingdra, and can't get crit. As Slowbro tanks, okay. Omastar finishes off Kingdra, nice. and the next turn Metagross. The final evil team fight of the game is down. Weather update. Weather it's update. It's raining Severe lava. flooding alert. Weather the update. entire world is now an ocean. What does that mean? Anyway, let's get our last. <laughs> the entire history world, I guess. Cave of Origins God, I love that gives video. the player access to a guaranteed Duskull encounter. An Emerald Kaizo Elite 4 without Dusclops is pretty close to unbeatable because of the champion fight. Remember that Dusclops has pretty significantly buffed stats in this game. I luckily encounter a low-level Duskull and have 27? an easy time casting Exorcist. it. However, it has pretty bad IVs and, and an even worse nature. Most importantly, mm. this does not have enough attack to consistently kill Drake's Latios with Shadow Ball and to Shadow Snake, which find is this a out? huge breaking point for the Elite Four. We also get a Zatu and Sky Pillar, which isn't important for anything, but I've always wanted to point out how Zatu's wing looks like Among Us, so it stays in the Oh my god. There's also like dinosaurs fighting in Sutopolis City, but yeah. one of them is standing on this like tiny island. He growled, I was like, come at me, bro. To me. Anyway, a third dinosaur in the sky, which makes the other two leave. I can only assume this is because the red one shit his... <laughs> shit his pants, really? Is, the, is it wearing is pants? The, is every single joke in the rest of the script. Just about someone shitting their pants. Zootopolis what? also has permanent rain, but honestly, this is just an easier seafloor cavern. Dust clops with Earthquake, absorb Lantern and Quagsire, the occasional skill swap from Mischievous to get Swift Swim or Huge Power off, make all of this pretty doable. Yeah. On Ranger and Rhea, I make a small mistake while pivoting and have to risk my Pelipper on a 50-50, which I uh, lose. Lose, okay. Oh no. Should name you Jaden. Not the Pelipper. <laughs> also, this Magneton went crazy on me and pray and off nothing Brianna, about and lost. I had to sacrifice Omastar. That one hurt oh, no. a little more. Did I mention that Zutopolis is a not want to die. in this game? First you fight Wallace in a single battle, then Juan in a double battle. Oh, he Juan. leads with a Kingdra with Draco Meteor. Normally this would be terrifying, but Slowbro can just heal through these with Slack Off, while Kingdra slowly takes itself out with recoil damage. Oh, so Slowbro cool. beats Wallace's cast form, which always wants to thunder. I can safely switch Sceptile in here. I damaged Sceptile before Ooh. the fight. We haven't seen Sceptile in a while. The amount where Thunder will always hit it into Overgrow range, no matter what damage Cast Form rolls on Thunder. Cast Form gets the crit and paralysis, oh. but even that we're prepared for. Sceptile then one kills Cast Form and baits out Lapras. Because Sceptile got a crit, nice. Lapras now sees a kill with all four of its moves, uh -huh. but Lapras can luckily take any of them. Wallace gets another crit with it's Ice all about I, I Thunderbolt bringing Lapras down to half health. However, in an unexpected maneuver, Wallace I'm gonna need to like Lapras think about this when it comes to hey guys, the Nuzlocke we'll I'm starting again. tomorrow. So remember earlier when I said that the Pokemon Emerald AI never switches out? I do want to do an Emerald well, randomizer. I lied. There's Nuzlocke actually maybe. a really specific situation in which I, the Emerald AI, can sometimes switch. If a Pokemon is faster than mine, just hit me with a move that a Pokemon on my team has a resistance or immunity to. Oh. And if that Pokemon also has a super effective move against the Pokemon that just You'll hit switch. me, then and only then can I sometimes switch out. And, well, what do you mean sometimes? that's what the Emerald AI just did here. This throws a huge wrench in my plan. Yeah. I switched Ludicolo in on the Because there's nothing he can do about and it. And fake out for some extra damage. I then click Magical Leaf, which unfortunately can never kill because this Ludicolo is so goddamn trash. Swampert has two more moves it can go for here. Ancient Power or Yawn. We're prepared for Yawn with uh, Chesto Berry. There is, however, one line here power. that leads us to losing the entire run. If Swampert ancient gets power boost, Omni yep. Boost with Ancient Power, making it faster than Ludicolo, and then crits the next turn, okay. it sweeps the and rest crit. of my team. Okay. It's about a 1 in 640 for this to happen. That's so low. There's no way this would ever happen. No right? way that happens. Right? 
Yeah, right. It, it would like, happen it to me, I'm sure. Yawned, missed, and I like, killed it. Black okay, thank comes God. Back in and sees the super effective hidden power bug. It can also use ice beam Loud here, though, as the two are similar in damage. I can simply pivot through Quill Fish to bait a thunder and send in a lantern for some healing and a kill. Next is Ludicolo, who sees huh. a kill with Giga Drain. There's what no is that here, Pokemon supposed so to be? So lantern has to be sacked. This is fine. Lantern's usefulness has pretty much run its course. Quillfish can then come in for free, take it's a little with dude. a gunk shot. Whilst his last Pokemon is melodic and it's incredibly annoying. It's, it's like Jacob on the when he turned to a sociopath for another lock. I paralyzed the Waylord before this fight and try to whittle down melodic with hyper voice. I can then eventually switch Quillfish in and finish melodic off with a huge gunk shot. The path to Juan is now open. Time for some fireworks. Path to Juan for a one-on-one. -on -one. Lapras from using Thunder and Self Destructor Waylord, which kills everything on the field. Making the fight an instant 4v4. I go straight into Quillfish okay. Mischievous and explode the Pufferfish, killing two Mark 1 Pokemon. <laughs> okay. While leaving the Sacrifice. Field, Just Kamikaze. That's the third bomb, right? Colo and his Vaporeon eventually falls to Bartender. Okay. I have eight badges. My level cap is 100, so no more XP management necessary. Time to collect my final encounters and make my way towards the Pokemon League. I guess he's using Chapter her seven. Rick Haney so he wouldn't have Berserker. to train. And also EVs weren't Let's in this, so it wouldn't 14. matter. Right now, the plan is to use the following six Pokemon. Salamence, Slowbro, Wobbuffet, Ludicolo, <laughs> Wobbuffet. Dusclops, and Relicant. This, I would say, is a very standard, very average Emerald Kaizo Elite Four team. There is, is a it? lot of room for improvement. Yeah. First up is Evergrande City, where I encounter a wild Blaziken. Oh, if this has wild excellent Blaziken. stats, this is an easy inclusion on an Elite Four team. Someone maliciously manipulating Colonel. their team's stats. Why is it spelled like that? Probably give this viable IVs. I don't know why I felt the need to include that in the script. Anyway, this place again cannot speed Steven Starachi, so it will not make the team. There Oof. are two more ways I can go to improve this team. Ideally, I really want a good normal type to replace Swellow. Oh, dude, go into Elite Four with no items. And that's crazy. Audios. The best possible encounter for this is the 2% Snorlax encounter on Route 123. This, however, is incredibly difficult to catch as it gets Whirlwind. The way around this oh, is Suction Cuts Cradley, which is a guaranteed encounter in Meteor Falls. Alternatively, I can guarantee a melodic encounter in Meteor Falls. A good melodic can potentially replace Slowbro. It leads into a much worse Glacia, but a safer Drake. It all depends on okay. melodic stats, though. The 2% chance of Snorlax is a little bit too low for my taste, and I'd rather take a stab at a good melodic. However, the melodic so. I get is trash. <laughs> We're almost <laughs> certainly <laughs> using the Slowbro Wobbuffet team now. Which is There's a just few more Gyarados. Encounters Route 123, or it's a Magic Carp, I guess. A waterfall blocks Route 123 in Emerald Kaizo, but I can now scale it. However, the patch of grass is blocked by a gauntlet of double battles. Luckily, none of these mm. fights are too hard, as I have a massive level advantage and can now start very level are they? sacrificing Pokemon. Oh, I because it's next Huntail, Magneton, trainer or gym, which and is Elite Wall 4, which is level 100. My Route 123 encounter ends up being a Tauros, which is not It'd make a lot of sense for the games to be like this, normally. Colo. Our final team for this league is locked in now, and I have all of my encounters. I know what encounters need to be protected. This means I'm free to sacrifice every Pokemon in my box to Victory Road trainers if it gives me safer fights. Knowing this, I can just plan the 17 battles in Victory Road backwards, starting with the last trainer. This way, I know what I need for which battle and when it's safe to sacrifice something for tempo. There's actually a oh. fight against Red in Victory Road where he uses a oh, bunch of Red. legendaries, but thanks to our level advantage, hey, hi, the strategic polyrath sacrifice and just this a fight is very doable. One of the However, not like the other. I went into trouble on Expert Julie. My pillow swine puts her Metagross into Leechy Barrier range, giving it plus one attack as it doubles mm. its speed with agility. This thing is about to sweep my entire team if I'm not very careful. Really? I sacrifice Pillow Swine and send in Dawnfen, hoping that Metagross will explode because it's on low HP. I switch to Golem to catch the explosion and Golem oh. dies. Oh, well, I was planning I mean, to use Golem in a later fight, so I have to replan a little bit. Expert Felix is a very scary double battle, but I push past by exploding Electro and sacrificing Mistrevis. The scariest fight here, though, sacrifice is the final one with Wind Straight Veto, and I make an insanely irresponsible mistake here. Which I is? I decide to stall slacking with Salamence Fly, which fulfills all of the conditions or something. the AI needs to switch. As Salamence flies up, Vito switches to his Metagross, who is now about to send a super effective Rock Slide towards my Elite Four Pokemon. If he crits, I lose Salamence oh, okay, that's Elite a, Four. You're asking for a crit. And my chances plummet. Not, oh, oh yeah, I didn't crit. Okay. Okay. Yeah, those moments that was are terrifying. A that I forgot about. Never Would you take those, those gambles? Slime. I make it out of Victory Road with all the tools I need to beat the Elite Four. This is it. The final team. Chat's going Exorcist, crazy. Nurse. Moderator. <laughs> historian. Mailman and bartender. That thing's actually going to the final Chapter four eight. or the elite the four. Tale. Final four is basketball. 150 failed attempts over 1,000 hours over the course of more than a year of my life, and it could all end here, just like it over did a year. 
The day I woke up for the Elite Four, I was legitimately shaking. I knew that there were so many things that could go wrong, even yeah. if I played perfectly. Yeah. I did some napkin math the night before and knew that <laughs> even with perfect play, my chances were probably around 60% to win. One small mistake would send that number plummeting, though. Here we go. Let's start at Sydney. It leads with a sable eye, oh, which has been okay. buffed to a comical a degree in this game, sporting nearly terrifying twice the bullet of Mega Sable Eye and more than 50% more attack. This thing is an absolute monster, and it doesn't have a single type as its weakness. There's really only one way to consistently beat this. I have to stall. We will use the synergy <sighs> stall between tactics. slow burst, Love stall stall tactics. abilities, shell armor, and intimidate here. By pivoting That's how I uh, did my platinum as luck. Who take turns stall taking brick tactics. breaks and HP rocks, I get Sableye down to minus three attack, which is the sweet spot. I don't want Salamence to take too much damage. Sableye's Toxic. damage is reduced nice. significantly, and it can't crit through the attack drops on Slowbro's shell armor ability. Mm -hmm. I can Toxic it and just spam Slack off. Oh, I'm gonna say critical hit on Toxic. Sydney's team is quite scary, but the most scary Pokemon after Sableye is Houndoom. None of my Pokemon. Yeah, this is this is the team, this, so we're not gonna have any sacrifices yet. Because of this, I want Houndoom to come out as early as possible, so the team is as healthy as it can be. To bait it out, I switch to Relicanth the turn that Sableye dies. Houndoom sees the super effective Hidden Power Grass and comes mm -hmm. out. I send uh, Salamence in switch. safely yep. on the Quad Resist. If Salamence gets crit here, I lose the run. Hold it! No. Oh. Oh. That's good dropping real fast. Salamence holds! Then get crit. The rock slide. <sighs> will that kill? Yes! Will that Oko? Yes, it will. After this, I get a completely free kill on Sydney's Machamp. Oh, I think Because our Salamence has maximum attack, it can simply air slash for a kill here. <laughs> Even slightly less attack would not have guaranteed this. Sydney really? sends in Jolteon, which wants Thunderbolt. Dusclops could come in here and kill with Earthquake into Shadow Sneak. I do lose the run to either double crit or double paralysis here. Next up is Sydney's Tauros. I pivot through Relic no and Salamence for an Intimidate. Look how low the health bro, is. Who can easily outheal the minus one attack bull. This is the first spell. trainer. Last is Alakazam. My only way to deal with this is Wobbuffet. If it low rolls, Wobbuffet Mirror Coat will leave it alive. I need to do just a little bit of extra damage, so I switch to Ludicolo, uh, fake out, and then go to Wobbuffet to kill one Elite Four okay. member down. Phoebe lost a lot Phoebe, of health to do so. The most EK runners provides a bit of fresh air. Oh, oh, he's able to scary, use items in between battles. Okay, he can't use items First during battles, Gengar. I guess. Since turn one, Destiny Bond is impossible. I can go with a clean kill with Lumberry Dusclops here. Shadow Ball into Shadow Sneak. Here comes Phoebe's Dusclops. This one has double team and rest, which, if you're not prepared for, is a run killer. I will do what I have to do and completely PP stall this thing. The first step is to get <laughs> the minus three attack by I did that. And Salamence and bring in the nurse. The advantage I, I did that to uh, uh, here uh, I don't know. I do we know. Is holding a leopard berry which restores Engine 10 five. PP <laughs> of a move when a Pokemon runs out of it. I can then use recycle to get back my last used hell item with the leopard berry. With this combination, I effectively have infinite PP if I time my recycles <laughs> correctly. PP. I completely stall dust comes <laughs> out of PP. Once it's one turn away from dying to toxic, I switch to Exorcist to bait Phoebe Sableye. Uh... This one is a little more risky to stall out. As always, I pivot Relicanth to Salamence for the Intimidate. I need to go back into Fair. Relicanth because I need another Intimidate to pull this off. Another Relicanth Intimidate? Why does that thing no Intimidate? Sableye is more likely to double about that anyway, intimidating. so I risk it. I get the minus three and bring in Slowbro. I want to Toxic as soon as possible before it sets up too many double Ever teams to roll second hit. Sableye, however, gets a defense drop. And now I make a pretty crucial misplay. I click Disable, oh. which hits Sableye's Recover. This means mm. that Salamence, who has to be out when Sableye dies, is more likely to switch into a Shadow Ball crit. There's no way around it. Oh. I have to risk this. Oh, we don't like that. It's a Shadow Ball. Is it going to crit? Salamence oh. Oh. holds! Salamence gets the clean outspeed and kill on Ludicolo. And nice. And Phoebe's Crobat. I intimidate, kill it. bring right out Slowbro, and after 25 minutes of stalling, Crobat 25 for minutes Dusclops of stalling? Down. Dusclops safely kills her final Pokemon Gardevoir, and I'm officially... Two elite four members. Halfway deep. there. The bad news is that this was by far the easy part. But oh, I have great. to push forward. Gracia yeah. is absolutely not even halfway because you had the champion. Terrifying. Her room has permanent rain in an elite four that doesn't afford you to bring a full rain team yourself. If you lose Oof. any Pokemon in this fight, you are likely not making it past Drake. At this point, I had nearly 30,000 people watching me live. 30? I've never been this nervous in my entire life. 30,000 people? Concurrent viewers? Part justice and a post commentary. Whoa. And I think I did a pretty good job breaking this I guess this took a live. year or so, but people had a year to come watch the stream. So much. If you like I do it every single Wednesday. Consider subscribing. I have about 5,000 hours of Nuzlocking experience, and what follows were by far the most intense Pokemon battles of my life. I really hope the pressure is insane. So this is the reason we kept the one white herb that is in the entire game. There is only one instance of this. White herb eliminates the intimidate here, which means oh. we get rid of that attack drop. We get to head smash this for a guaranteed kill through Swift Swim. Kill she it. goes Regice. 
and we get to kill that too. Yeah. Now, there's Reggie a iced. slight issue, chat. It is 15 out of 16 rolls to kill. If we miss this range, there's a 1 in 16 chance it doesn't fucked, hit. But things are looking real fucking bad. <laughs> oh. Okay! All right. Last time this dude going is what I mean, us. they're low chances of not hitting. We have a different plan hitting, for it so. this time. Slow bro. It's still even 1% of scary. Up, now, I did say that was the last PP stall. I did not say that it was the last toxic stall, chat. This is, in <laughs> fact, the last toxic stall. Got to add two toxics because this is like every other Pokemon in this Elite Four. Lumberry. And a slack off and toxic. That's, that's a, a great Pokemon. All, huh? So, yeah, we have the Lepaberry still. So, we're going to go to Wobbuffet here because we don't need Wobbuffet's HP on this fight to bait the HP or to take the HP grass and bait a Surfer yeah. with a Colo. Because it's not going to positioning die. means we'll go Lapras and after a Giga Drain, we'll toxic full kill HP, it. Which means we're not dead to crit. Yet. Yet. Keyword We're yet. not going to fake out because Giga Drain always 3 hit KOs. I'm going to triple confirm this real quick. Triple which confirm. Which means we'll have more HP recovered on the final Giga Drain. All right. We can die to crit here if we low roll and then he crits. My boy. Okay. Looty. Oh, God. This is your chance, buddy. Is it going to. Is it going to. Redeem yourself. <laughs> is it going to happen? Whatever happened before, is it going to happen again? Is there going to be irony? It's not going down fast. There's a good ass roll. But is it Ice Beam going to crit? Redeem yourself. Oh, it's go it's going fast. Yes. Okay. Bartender. <laughs> Serving us a dub. Well, That's Lord. Fine. We have a Lepa Berry equipped, so we have more than enough slack off PP. <laughs> We're not going to use any other moves here. You get no a toxic to. slack off. Just slack off. Time to count water spout PP chat. That's one. Water spout? He has eight total. Oh. Hold, slow bro. Hold that shit, That's buddy. That's all numbers. 30,000 viewers. Hey, YouTube. Okay. <laughs> We're fine. The official video is going to be a top link down below in the description. Oh, man. And that's eight. If we counted correctly, the only moves Waylord has left are Hyper Voice, Hyper Self Destruct, and Amnesia. You guys have one guess as to who is switching in now. Just blow up, you piece of shit, please. Oh, and it won't affect Exorcist because it's a ghost. Yep. Yeah. Dude, Thank the you. bait. Dusclops always beats Muddy Water or Yawn here. There's still a lose condition here. Muddy water course, accuracy course, drop, course, which is a really is. awkward spot where we have to just click Giga Drain and hope that we don't miss and hit the range. Let's just not get muddy water to get dropped, huh? Yeah, just let's don't just, just don't have that let's happen. Let's just not do that. <laughs> let's just not. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Can we just double magical leaf? It risks crit and he can get an AP boost. Always at risk the crit. We do still have our lumberry. I do believe that Giga Drain is just an int. Missing Giga Drain is a higher chance than getting crit. Yeah, yeah. Hold it, Ludi. Come on. Oh, okay. It didn't kill. It wasn't going to. Ancient Power. Hold it! Uh, it didn't. A critical <sighs> hit. This isn't happening. Oh, that's this brutal. This fucking happening again! Just crit is what fucks us here. Oh, was that that's the other one? Okay. Was that? No, that's a. Un oh, it's a temp 77. Boys. Okay. This Drake is gonna be really fucking rough. I cannot believe Ludi got crit on Glacia again. Hmm. The pain. I don't know what the optimal Slowbro HP is. <laughs> we can only end in HP values that he end on two. Optimal is 318. The reason we want that is because Kingra's Draco Meteor is a chance to two-hit KO. So if we switch it in, he low rolls, we don't proc Wiki Berry, don't heal, and then he high rolls, we die. I think we just want to get as close to so 3 speaking as another possible. Language. We're gonna need some really good RNG on Drake now. And I mean some really fucking good RNG. <laughs> uh, how, how good? Like, percentage-wise. I guess it's, it's random, so it's not really... Well, I mean, Wait. you could break it down to a percentage. I'm so stupid. Oh, no. 
Wait, what? That's probably gonna cost me the run. Dude, I'd the fact that I say the same stuff when the things go really bad. just got increased by quite a lot. Come on! <laughs> just get through it. Just get through it. He's so stressed, we dude. It's so stressful. Luck. First and foremost, Bot I need Boba Fett to hold. Draco Meteor. Yikes. No crit, no crit, no crit. We don't want to crit. God, Wobble Fett has so much health. Mmm, mmm, mmm. No. Oh he my. Holds. And the recoil. Right, that was a prerequisite to staying alive. That wasn't even a crit? Whew. All right, we really, really need this to not be ancient power. Is it going to be ancient power? Intimidate helps big time with Tyranitar. Punished. Actually punished. Don't get the boost. Actually fucking punished. Don't get the Omni boost. Super effective. Okay, didn't get the boost. It's Yet to see a single one of them get the boost, I think. Oh, oh no. Ooh. It was going down real slow there at the end. This might be Sackman's. Wait. Sackman's. Don't sacrifice him. Wait. Wait. Do you outspeed? Rock Tomb? Rock Tomb is slowing Relic down. Is faster. I don't think. Yeah, we, I think we kill after recoil. Oh no. Fuck. Hold on. Wait. Will Salomon die though? I'm not faster. Not faster? I think I need to go for Rock Slide Flinch. I think this is Men's Sack. Oh! Excuse me, the most out. Sack. I kill after rock slide, yeah. It's 40% minimum roll on minus one, 70% after dragon claw. Oh, God. The play. Oh, dude, making that call. If you make that mistake, that haunts you forever. Especially with how many views this video has at Unlucky. almost 5 million. It didn't flinch. Is Draco Meteor going to kill? Does that sound like not know a dragon move? A mint sack. F. Just low, low roll me. Come on. Low roll, please. Draco Meteor is not nice. That's really low. Recoil. Okay, hit with the recoil. Ancient power. This will kill. That's really fucking low. A critical hit. Now you get a critical hit. Again, the crit word doesn't matter. Yeah. Every time. Never dead to Earthquake. Never dead. Dragon there. Dance is insane here. Yes. Dragon Dance. Oh, man. I'm yes. going to have a Dragon Dance in every single one. Oh. This is a range, by the way. 1 in 16 chance. That He's won a lot of these 1 in 16 chances. Mm, do we get a crit? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh. Are you fucking kidding me. Earthquake so dies. Scary. Mm, just anything. Just get hit with a recoil. At least they can't use items. So fucking scary. I can actually get anything. fucked by my hyper be uh, hyper potion play now too. Shadow sneak. I mean that'll that'll kill it, won't it? Okay, yeah. Please just high roll. Please just fucking high roll. Please just fucking <laughs> high roll, dude. Just <laughs> please, please, Draco please, 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 please. God, please, they love please, using please. that on. move. Come on, just proc my wiki berry. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, we're yes! good. Is that a low roll? Oh, now the berry's gonna hit. Okay. Nice. We're not out. Slack off. It's gonna heal. Is this, are we? Is this gonna be a PP stall? It'll survive this no matter what, I'm pretty sure. It's gonna, yep, yeah, hit with the recoil. It's gonna slack off. Get a ton Hold of its this health shit back. real fucking tight, man. Dude, the bargains. And now, I don't think it can die, we can it? We're to missing the range with Dust Claps. Unfortunately. It's gonna use it again. It's gonna hit, hit with the recoil. I'm pretty sure. Well, oh, Slow, slow Bro is resistant to crit. Man, what a. Perfect Pokemon. Slack off to get health back. It knows toxic and it's resistance to crit. Hold this Dude, shit, man. What? The good news is it might be like hidden power. 
from Latias. Remember, if he kills himself with Draco Meteor, the turn ends and we do not get to slack off. This works in our favor here. Oh, okay. Just put me into HP fire range, 50 HP or less. Uh, it definitely will. It'll leave you like 30 some. Sick. 35, right in the middle. Hit with recoil, dies. HP fire. Latias. Just fucking HP fire. Uh, now what? Exorcist. We lost a lot of Pokemon here. A lot of Pokemon dead. Fuck. Dragonclaw. You lose to missing the range now. Oh, okay. Calm mine. Or maybe not. I like how now he doesn't have the voiceover. He literally just has, like, the, his actual live footage of him talking. Maybe not. Shell Bell actually paying off here. Shell Bell. That is item. not good. Yeah! The defense fell. What is the odds of that happening? We're going to Steven! Going to Steven, which is the champion. How do you take on Steven? He's lost like four of his Pokemon. Okay! Does he get the swap attempt. out? This is for attempt 77. <laughs> attempt this 77. Is for Flygon. That, was that was half the attempts ago. The bartender for Historian and for the max attack oh, mailman. Oh, I thought he lost who really four. did deliver. He's lost three. If we get crit once, it's over. Let this glorious battle begin. What? You get crit once you lose? After all this? We need to avoid crit and turn one explosion. That's pretty good HP. Okay. Those health numbers are crazy. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Woo. You too. Okay. That is very fucking good HP. Come on. <laughs> Don't crit. Oh, it's yes! super effective. Didn't crit. Oh, counter. Which counter is going to do crazy on, damage? Only a little bit fucking more. I like it's a Mewtwo? A fucking more. How's he have a Mewtwo? <laughs> it's not over, but we're so close. Sack one. Deoxys. My good. friend. Moderator. That was me and my white nose lock. Like no I had other. to do this. Dustclops. I did the Show same thing. I did power. the like the screaming salute. Show them what you fucking have. It was it was rough. Oh. We have to dodge hydro pump crit. Come on. Hydro pump, don't crit, don't crit, then yes! crit. Okay. Okay. No crits. Okay. This is Gen We're 5, so it'd be a different story. Oh. We're so fucking close. I think it could survive a crit now. At least that if you get a crit at Just any a point. Just a tiny bit more. Oh, Shadow Sneak must be priority move. <sighs> Almost there. Just a teensy tiny bit more. Wild. And Jirachi. And I'm going to FaceTime. No attack boost. Because I've been watching no this crit. video for an hour and a half. <laughs> One of the longest videos I've ever done. Open Not over. Alfred asked you to watch a video. You watch Not it. Not fucking over. 138. We shadow sneak here. It gives us more healing from Shell Bell and a good range to the survive. The chair in the background Two shaking. shadow balls will definitely put him into flamethrower range for Slowbro. I think we have it. I have to hit it, though. I have to, sh I have to shadow sneak. It's my only play. Oh. I'm too... Too likely to be dead at Meteor Mash. I think I'm gonna have to shout. I'm, I think I'm gonna have to Fire Blast. Dude, making these calls. I are think it's so gonna have to come down to Fire tough. Blast. Still one range that kills me. Plus Meteor crit. Mash. Oh! Easy. Sneak Shadow again. Sneak. Is this gonna be a sacrifice? Uh, this has to be a sacrifice. I don't think I can flamethrower this. I don't fucking think it's I can gonna do get it, a, man. It's gonna get a free. Yep. It's ruler strat time, boys. <laughs> ruler strat, what? 42 to 49% damage is what we need to do. 42 to 40. I think we flamethrower. 1.6 centimeters on a 4.5 yeah, centimeter HP sense. bar. Should be 35%. If I am not what? measuring by 7 whole percent, we flamethrower. <sighs> Careful now. <laughs> Yep, that is definitely 1.6. The math. This way, I have multiple monitors. This is at 35% HP. Flamethrower deals a minimum of 42. 
I'm sending that shit, boys. Send it. Full send. Go. Thunderbolt. That crit resistance. Imagine if you had a swallow race paralysis. right now. Not gonna matter. We have Lumberry anyway. Dead. Dead. Nice. Okay! He can never kill us. Can never kill us. We just heal. Over. We take it slowly, baby. Is it gonna you use can't crit, Draco Meat? Sky Attack, 132 What's on it? the max roll. 132 on the so max, and it can't crit. 50 50 chance to kill. Ooh. I know it can't kill, but it's still <sighs> terrifying to look at. This is the victory lap, boys. This is the fucking victory lap. Exorcist. You can't kill it. Getting rid of our Six demons. Health. Nice. Nurse. Healing us to completion. That's why it's called Nurse, Hit I guess. Hit the fucking range. Hit it. And Slack Off was getting more health than it was losing. We beat it killed. guys all. Wow. Chat's going nuts. 30,000 people. Oh my god. Well deserved. Well deserved. The chat yes! literally breaking. It's literally breaking. Yes! <laughs> so, Jacob, when are you doing <laughs> No. I, no. <laughs> I'm done! I'll never have to see this fucking game again! <laughs> All you can do is laugh. The chat's freaking out. It's look how broken it is. Just people are spamming chat that fast. Wild. It's over. <laughs> Guys, it's fucking over. After how many hours and days of the stream of this attempt? Fifty-one attempts. Almost a whole year down to a week. 51 weeks? Oh. Look at all the subs pouring in right now. That's a ton of subs. <laughs> wow. Well deserved. <laughs> I learned a lot about Pokemon in this video. I did. I learned a lot. And I understand why Yon... Er, yeah, Yon... Is is it Yon? No, it's Yon. Yon, not Yon, not John. Yon. Kudos so... to you, Yon. You're truly noble Pokemon trainer. Yeah. For him knowing all this stuff. Hey, thank you so much for coming along on this journey with me. Me playing Emerald Kaiser will forever be connected in my mind to the time in my life where I went from being five years into failing my college degree to being oh. able to do YouTube and Twitch full time. I went to this college for five days. Set screwed and left. My Got my money back. I don't know if it's possible, but I want to spend the next years of my career. Dedicating myself to replicating whatever made this game so magical. Well, Thanks yeah, your channel games doubled since this video. video so. Also, a huge shout out to Sinister Hooded Figure who made this crazy game, as well as all the insanely talented Emerald Kaiser runners who paved my way to the Hall of Fame of this game. Do people like Dexel, have guides? Run and Bun, Loop Mail, GN97, Probably. And Decapod, or some that come to mind. Also, a massive shout out to my mod Spagasparce who co-wrote this script as well as Critical the one hit. for the Emerald Kaiser wipe compilation. <laughs> he went through an enormous amount of effort cataloging all the different attempts and Attempt 151. exactly what happened in all of them. Super, See, super crazy. my Nuzlocke awesome are graveyards. Who made all the animations in this video and to Vicento for editing the entire thing. That's a cool her Twitter is linked in the description. If you need any editing done ever, yeah, uh, that's I a highly reason. recommend her. She's a delight to work with. I think that's it. I really suck at these YouTube outros, so um, Awkward, I'm just yeah. going to end it here. Thanks for watching and see you soon. I think the next big challenge is just around the corner. What is the next big challenge? Is this a normal outro or is this a teaser for what the next big challenge is? He thought the Nuzlocke was over? Oh no. Felt his Nuzlocke 150 times. Is this this Nuzlocke? Because that would be 151 attempts. I have no idea. An amazing video, Jacob. Thank you so much for requesting. Also, thank you so much for following me. And thank you for not hating me. And also, if we ever get the chance, I would gladly pay that React, that react tax that you made uh, Yon play. <laughs> Yon pay for. <laughs> oh, oh god. Crazy video, one of the longest videos I have ever reacted to. I think I've reacted to a movie that was an hour and a half long. This is definitely in the top three of longest videos I have ever recorded. I have a plane flight in uh, about seven hours. <laughs> Taking a day trip to Disney World because why not? But Pokemon Emerald Kaizo.
I was hoping it was going to be Emerald. I absolutely love Emerald. I have not done an Emerald Nuzlocke yet. I've only done two Nuzlocke's, uh, Platinum and Pokemon White. The last Pokemon game I played before I stopped playing was Platinum. So I went into Gen 5, not knowing anything about Gen 5, never seen any of the Pokemon, which are all new, and did a Nuzlocke. And I just finished it last week. The VOD is actually up on Twitch for about the next week. It's saved on my computer. It's all going to be uploaded onto my gaming channel. I'll probably make a video at some point in the future. It's just a lot of editing because I do all the editing for this channel. And also have an anime reaction channel. And I also stream four times a week. And I read every single comment. I make every single thumbnail. All that crazy stuff. Uh, I've been reacting to Alfred videos every single week. Uh, at one point I was doing two a week for a long period of time. But I've done... Well over 60 Alfred videos at this point. I'm doing his Mario Party stuff right now, which I didn't know Mario Party existed until a week ago. Um, uh, Jacob, tell Jacob if you tell me to buy a Switch, I will go buy a Switch. Like the moment you say go buy a Switch, I will go buy a Switch and play Mario Party. So if you're watching the video, Jacob, I hope that you are. Thank you so much for requesting this. I really hope you all enjoyed this. If you're, even if you're not Jacob, even if not Jacob Alfred, if you're uh, Jan, Pokemon challenges, or anybody else in the community. I know Captain Kid put me in his video uh, for my reaction to him giving Jacob that uh, info in the uh, Elite Four. But <laughs> if you're one of those people watching the video, I really hope you enjoyed this one. I learned so much. Um, Pokemon Challenge's brain would explode if he saw the way I do Nuzlocke's. Uh, just because, like I said, I didn't know that Stab were a thing. I haven't played Pokemon most of my life. I still have all of my cards and everything. So, uh, you feel free to answer any questions I have down in the comment section down below. Because, like I said, I do read every single comment. I really hope I made you smile. Hopefully, I made your day a tiny little better. Trying to hit 100,000 subscribers before the end of the year. Lost my channel a couple years ago. I had to start all the way back over. And here we are again. I have a great community. Wonderful people. I have a Discord server that's just my biggest accomplishment is my Discord server because it's brought people together from all across the world that have made friendships that will hopefully last a lifetime. So... I really hope you all enjoyed this video. Hopefully it made your day better. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. But until the next video, take care and keep the music. We were playing.